the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagan Maradian here at the Center for Naval Analysis to talk to my good friend Sam Bendet, uh, who's one of the world's leading experts on Russian unmanned uh, combat systems. Sam, Happy New Year and great seeing you again. Happy New Year to you as well. Great to see you and happy to be on the uh, video cast. Busy year, obviously, for the for the Russians. You know, uh, we we ended the year with you forecasting the kind of capabilities that the Russians were going to be uh, fielding. Talk to us a little bit. Let's uh, first start with uh, let, let's go across the four major developments over the course of the year. So, give us kind of an update of some of the systems that have gone into effect because uh, we heard about Ochotnik, uh, we've uh, talked about Uran Nine, we've right. we've talked about uh, Carnivora, which I absolutely love uh, as, a, as a name. Uh, giving name. it's a great name, giving that violence the Russians, uh, you know, uh, want uh, out, of a, out of a system. But then uh, also Uran-6, which is sort of the sphere, uh, very, very small handheld uh, system. So walk us through from, from the high end all the way across on these new kind of systems, which the Russians have now declared uh, in operational service. Right. So this past couple of weeks, we've seen the uh, wheeling out and uh, the light of day of Ahotnik or Hunter, uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicle. That's the system that's been in development since 2011. Uh, Russians have promised that they're going to fly test it in 2019 and uh, acquire it into military service a couple of years later. So Ahotnik is supposed to be a stealthy um, unmanned combat aerial vehicle with a long range, and uh, it's supposed to be one of the heaviest uh, systems of its kind. And so. Uh, it weighs up to 20 tons, so that means uh, this is something that can carry a lot of uh, weight. It can potentially carry a lot of ammunition. Uh, there's a big debate uh, over what kind of unmanned combat aerial vehicle it's going to be. Is it going to be kind of a slow-flying penetrator of enemy airspace? Is it going to be a fast aircraft that does bombing runs? Uh, right now, uh, Russians are testing it out. Uh, and right now, uh, they're developing the concept of operations for that UCAF. Now, Uran-9, unmanned ground uh, combat vehicle, or an armored tank, if you will, was actually tested in Syria last year. Uh, but, but it hasn't been declared operationally, uh, fully operationally in service, right? That was a developmental prototype so, unit. So, yeah. So that was a prototype. It was taken to Syria, and a lot of problems were revealed with that particular design. So practically everything that could have gone wrong with an unmanned vehicle of its kind did. So there were system uh, problems um, with uh, firing mechanisms, with uh, communication, uh, all kinds of stuff went wrong. And so Russians kind of took it back and they publicly revealed that maybe they're going to develop a new way of using such systems, maybe not uh, in an independent uh, way as originally designed, but maybe kind of like a kamikaze role, uncovering adversarial hard points and then launching those vehicles so that manned assets can then destroy the adversary. Which is, which is interesting, right? Because they're developing the con ops along with the right. system now in parallel. Correct. And so uh, this week we've heard that uh, Kalashnikov Design Bureau, which is now overseeing this project, is developing a first batch of serial production Iran 9s. Uh, and it was declared that some of the problems encountered in Syria were actually uh, solved uh, without much detail. So we don't know exactly what kind of problems were solved and how they're going to be incorporated into Uran-9. Uh, Kalashnikov also said something interesting that Uran-9 is a good testing platform for further development. So maybe the first batch of Uran-9s that the Russian military will get will be kind of that testing role. So they will use that as the platform on which to test and uh, try out new kind of way of uh, using unmanned vehicles in combat. One of the biggest problems that Oran 9 encountered its, in Syria was its uh, communication range. It's designed to have the operator placed at around four kilometers or about two and a half miles from combat at a safe distance. But in Syria, the operator had to be just a few hundred meters uh, away from Oran 9, which kind of defeated the purpose. So the question remains, did they actually solve such communication, firing, and mechanical problems? Did they sol solve all of them? Did they solve some of them? And then launched Oran 9 into production so that they can test it further and refine it further. And uh, I, we, we've got to talk about uh, my, one of my favorite systems, which is Carnivora. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so bring us up, just bring the audience up to mm -hmm. speed on what the system is uh, and why it's so significant that now it's been cleared for uh, operations. So this is a light unmanned aerial vehicle designed to target small unmanned aerial systems. So in Syria, Russians came under fire, just like Americans and other forces there, from uh, very cheap uh, commercial off-the-shelf uh, drones. 
And so Russians were very keen on developing defenses against such adversarial systems that can sneak past various defenses. And so they developed an actual drone that can hunt other drones via launching nets and other munitions. So this week they actually tested that out. And uh, do we have any word on how the tests went? That's right, it's not in operational use, but it's still in the developmental right. phase. But um, any sense on how those tests went? Well, uh, the only announcement we have is that this was tested out, and the next phase for Carnivora would be its testing in combat. So presumably it will be taken to Syria, just like several hundred other different uh, military designs that Russians have tested out in Syria over the past couple of years. So now there are also two other systems to, to talk about, which is Uran-6, uh, which is um, a, a larger, uh, it, it, an unmanned ground vehicle uh, right. that's also in the developmental phase, but also there's Sfera, which is a v small handheld system which you can right. roll into a room similar to what Israelis have been using for a long right. time, and also U.S. forces uh, did in Iraq and Afghanistan. Walk us through what's on uh, the, the schedule for both of these systems. So both of these systems, systems have been officially accepted into Russian service into the demining forces. So those systems were tested in Syria. In fact, uh, whenever you would Google Russian military in Syria, uh, a picture of an operator and an um, Uran 9-6 and the background would actually come up. Sfera is a, is a baseball-sized device with a couple of cameras that you can basically throw um, in, for example, a collapsed building or uh, wh wherever there's rubble to check it out. And it's, it's a system that's widely used. In fact, in the United States, uh, it's sometimes used for disaster response and for humanitarian assistance. So Russians have successfully used those uh, unmanned uh, ground vehicles in Syria, and now they are part of the Russian de demining forces. In fact, both are going to be a part of the Russian International Demining Center opened outside of Moscow. And uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, what's, what's to come. Uh, what's, what do, should the shrewd uh, person who's watching what the Russians are up to be paying attention to over the next couple of months? So what's interesting is that the Russians are pressing ahead with incorporating some of these unmanned systems into their CONOPs, so concept of operations, tactics, techniques, and procedures. So it would be interesting to see how they're going to be using some of those systems used in Syria uh, on the larger scale across its uh, uh, military forces and in various military districts. Um, how Russians think about the way they will use unmanned ground and aerial combat vehicles will also in some way influence how other forces are going to be using them because in some ways Russians are a bit ahead of other world powers in incorporating such unmanned systems, especially if they're armored. Uh, Russians are also designing a lineup of Arctic UAVs to be used in very cold, frigid temperatures. And they're also pressing ahead with the development of other combat, ground, as well as surface and undersea uh, vehicles as well. So 2019 is going to be a big year. A lot of promises were made by the Russian military and the government that some of these expensive uh, systems are going to be finally uh, tested out and uh, that they should see the light of day. And so this year, in fact, we are going to see some of those long range, mid range, and heavy combat systems in the air, on the ground, and at sea going through various trials. Sam Mendet of the Center uh, for Naval Analysis. Always a pleasure, Sam. Thank you so very much. And looking forward to having you back on soon. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Vago.